First of all, before I forget, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. If you are watching on Twitter, I mean, I'm sorry, YouTube, you can look behind me and see one of her, I could have propped it better, one of the pillows that she made us. And guys, do you realize it's almost the end of October? So start getting your orders in in November. It'll be a great gift. I think I'm going to do a few people because um, get them uh, some of these blankets because it's very meaningful. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. Yep. So I have to tell you about Sherlock. All right. So I told you guys the story about the bat, how he was staying in the front yard and him and this bat had this little playtime. Well, the other night, Sherlock is on his back, the bat swooping and Sherlock's kind of playing with him. Not they're not aggressive. It's like the bat loves him. So last night I'm in my living room and out of the corner of my eye, I see something. And it looks like Sherlock has a Fu Manchu, right? Just these long lines going down the sides of his mouth. So I go out there. He had killed a copperhead snake. Oh, yeah. You sent me a photo. Oh, my gosh. I'm moving. Like, I'm out. Bye. Because <laughs> it was a baby. So mama and the siblings are around here somewhere. But so I'm really focused this week on keeping that cat in the house. I'm so yeah. scared between snakes and bats. We're going to end up in the kitty ER at the tune of $2,000. My luck. Plus yeah, we have Halloween be... coming up. He's black cat. I can't have him out because people are freaks and they'll get my oh, cat. Yeah, they'll and them. Yeah. I'll get a charge because I will hurt somebody who hurts my cat. So we're going to talk about on this episode, what Steve Bertolino, who is the laundry family lawyer, by the way, I'm wearing a Stevie Nicks shirt that I just got this weekend. He has been on the media circuit essentially since they found these remains and they've been confirmed to be Brian. And before we start, there's so many conspiracy theories and speculations out about this case. I think if you remove all that and look, okay, he murders Gabby. He texts her mom. No service in Yellowstone or Yosemite, which I think kind of bought him a little bit of time to figure out what he was going to do. Yep. And so he goes home on the 11th of September. We get the missing person report. And we find out now that um, his lawyer was called about 1130 that night about this case. A couple hours later, the FBI is calling him. So I think with the missing person report, Brian knew he was going to have to start answering some really uncomfortable questions about Gabby. I think he left, went to that reserve, got about a mile in, and I think he killed himself. And I think that's it. Like, a lot of people want this to be so much more. Yeah. And they want it to be this really crazy, it's crazy enough. But, man, I have read so many things online oh, there's, where yeah there's it, tons it, of stuff it's out of hand people are saying it's not brian they found and i just don't know i think the fbi has a lot more information that they're not telling right now but i think in time we're gonna know more i think eventually once they get to a point they'll say okay here's what we found during our investigation i think this case is big enough they're gonna have to wrap it up at some point this is my thing if because some of the conspiracies are it's it's not him yeah. and the fbi is saying it's him and it's really not but i don't think they would risk him showing up later yeah and that being on their head that that was a false identification yeah i don't think they would stop looking if it weren't him yeah so anyways i'm just gonna say bertolino needs to stop giving interviews he's not yeah. good at them and the one thing that I've noticed is that he's very condescending with female journalists as opposed to male journalists. He kind of gets that little attitude with women. And I'm going to tell you, the women out in the true crime community don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of comments about it. it. Some of this stuff gets really confusing just because of the way he presents it. And I'm going to tell you, it's bugged me all weekend. But I finally realized he reminds me of Vinny and my cousin Vinny, the role <laughs> Joe Pesci played. Little Joe. That's who he reminds me of. So he gave a few interviews, and the first one that I watched, and I, I haven't watched all of it yet, but it was to East Idaho News, where he said that his kids grew up with Cassie and Brian, 
And he said that Chris and Roberta never talked to Brian again after September 13th, which is the day they now say that he left. So a cause of death is unable to be determined right now, but they have sent their remains to an anthropologist, hoping that they might be able to figure it out. They're really amazingly good at what they do. I've watched a whole documentary on how anthropologists work to find a cause of death on bones. Yeah. You just got to think about it. I don't know if there was enough left. It just depends. They say a portion of the skull. They were able to use dental records, so there's teeth and all that. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I mean, you would um, think if it was, if it was, uh, overdose, that would be, you could do that. You might be able to find that like in the bone marrow. Exactly. That's or what in I the would pulp think. of the teeth or something. Cause you have something. things there that, that yeah. do have the DNA. Yeah. But so how this kind of started in the beginning, he said he got the first call at 1130 PM Saturday night, which would have been the 11th. So that's the day that Gabby's parents reported her missing. At 1.30 a.m., he got a call from the FBI, and they called again at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. Monday had, morning, huh? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Monday morning, two FBI agents stopped by his office just to introduce themselves, and he said it was Monday or Tuesday he reported Brian didn't return. And after back and forth with the FBI, they confirmed it was Monday that he told them Brian didn't come home. But there's so much confusion about this out there right now. And yeah. it, it, he's doubting, he's kind of throwing Northport police under the bus because they're saying we heard about this like on a Friday and we were blown away because we hadn't heard it. So okay. who knows? The FBI Before knows forget, whether or not. Oh yeah. Before I forget, I want to jump back really quick to cause of death. If there's a gun found on scene, which if, yeah. If he shot himself and took his own life, then there would be some type of weapon there. That's going to help agree. determine, too. Um, yeah, and the FBI does not have to, nor are they going to say, hey, here's what we found here. They have to investigate. Yeah. There's still an investigation going on. So Tuesday through Thursday, Bertolino didn't have any contact with the FBI. So he's also... He used the wrong word. He said that Chris and Roberta reported that Brian was grieving on September the 13th. So the media took, took that and ran. And he said he wanted to clarify this and said they were upset and distressed. And he said he had used the wrong word. Um, he said that, that Chris and Roberta said Brian was extremely upset and they were worried about him and they wished they could have stopped him from leaving, but that he was intent on leaving. And his dad said in hindsight, he wished he would have stopped him. Okay, my thing is this. When you know things, yeah. that's how you slip up and say wrong wording. It, well, oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why he needs to stop giving interviews. He's got verbal diarrhea right now. It's not serving him well. Yeah. That's why a lot of times the attorneys will say, I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know anything. Right. You know? Yeah. Because, because what happens automatically, yeah. But what happens with this, whether he's lying or not, it's a very confusing thing to try to figure out when did he leave versus when you say he left because yeah. you're telling and, us two different things. Yeah. And if you use the word grieving, well, yeah, to me, that says he knew she was dead. Right. And they haven't even found her yet. Exactly. So, yeah. Yep. 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 So. so Bertolino said he couldn't answer if Brian knew Gabby was dead. He says that's privileged and confidential information. When asked if Brian killed Gabby, he said, I can't say he did or didn't, but the FBI may be able to shed light on that at some point. When asked about Chris and, or Roberta knowing, he said he can't comment on that. For me, <laughs> if I could say no, if I know the answer is no, I could say, nope, they didn't know anything. Right. But here's the thing for me is you have to think. He takes the blame for the laundries not talking to the Petito family. He said that was on his word. He told them, don't talk to them. Don't talk to the police. You would think for, for somebody who lived with them, if they knew nothing, or if they had been told a story of, hey, look, we got in an argument. Uh, she, she almost got arrested in Moab. You see what was happening here. I got away and I'm, I'm upset about it. Then hundred percent as a mother, I would pick up that phone and say, here's what 
he's telling us that's all I got. Yeah. And then, yeah. but not saying anything, you are saying that, you know, something you don't want to have to tell him. Exactly. Exactly. So as far as the location where the remains and items were found, Bertolino said Chris and Brian had hiked that area before, but the area off the path where the remains were found was underwater until recently. Mm -hmm. And I know that's been the question. Why do they just now find it? Why do they just now find it? And we, we know from other people saying that that wa that it was flooded a good bit in those areas. So September 18th, uh, the day after Chris and Roberta called to say Brian was gone, Brian, how do you say his name? Enton. Brian <laughs> Enton. Uh, he's like been all over it. Him and JB and we, yeah. we, we, we never could think of that guy's name in, in Walt. WFLA. Walt. Walt. Yeah, those yeah. three, they're the main ones for me that I've gotten what I've got from. Yeah. On yeah. top of it, 24-7 it seems. So Brian went live from the reserve on Twitter and said it had been raining a lot the last couple of days. He said it was swampy and the conditions weren't ideal to be searching. Yeah. And I went back and tried to find that because I do remember watching that live feed and it was right after we found out Brian's gone and he did say that. So I think yep. the thing that I've heard the most in the last few days is you have a path, but off to the left and the right is where it's swampy. You know, it's off. It's kind of in the brush. It's not on the main road. And I mean, it makes sense to me a lot. Look, I understand 110% because I feel the same way. It's weird. They spent millions of dollars. Mom and dad go in the day the park opens. Bam, mm -hmm. 45 minutes later, they've got his stuff and they're right next to his body or his remains. What was there? Yeah. I get that. But I, it, again, it's just people are passing off pictures that show areas that are dry, but that wasn't what it was like on the other sides where they actually found this stuff. It was underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was revealed by Brian Enton that investigators had set up surveillance cameras around the laundry home to keep an eye on things. I thought that was big. Yeah, but I think these weren't put up until after Brian left. Yeah, I think it, to me it sounded like they were trying to catch him coming back, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe, uh, you know, if the parents left because it came out too when they went to Orlando to meet with their attorney, which I think even now that's in question. Whether yeah. they went there to meet him, they were tailed by FBI. Yeah. They were following him just in case they were going somewhere Brian was, I assume. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Bertolino talked to all three of them on September 12th and September 13th. He said he also talked to Brian privately and Chris alone and Chris uh, and Roberta together. Mm -hmm. uh, he said Brian didn't seem suicidal when he talked to him. His parents said he didn't seem suicidal either, but Roberta said it's hard to know what he's feeling. They thought he was clearing his mind. When asked by Ashley, why did he report him? has gone to the FBI if Brian was clearing his mind. He said he casually mentioned he didn't come home. Yeah, because there's just, I mean, this has been the, the biggest confusion. And it's all because this lawyer just confuses it as he says it. And then a couple of times when Ashley tries to clarify, he gets mad at her and says, you're throwing all these things at me. And she's like, oh, you know, no, I'm just trying to clear up what you said because it makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. So George Stephanopoulos asked if Brian said anything to his parents about what happened to Gabby before Brian left to Bertolino and Bertolino said he couldn't comment. And George comes back at him and says, well, if you can't comment on it, that means you know something about it. That's so true. It's very easy oh, to yeah. say, no, he never said anything about him and Gabby or he didn't say he killed her. He said they had a fight. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, he said, well, I think everybody out there knows that whether the family or myself have some information to share, there's not that much that we can say at this point in time, and I'm going to leave it at no comment. So then he says, um, George Stephanopoulos asks, is that because they've been cooperating with the FBI? And he says, George, I've been quite clear on this from the very beginning. When it comes to the FBI, we have nothing to say in respect to Gabby Petito incident. With respect to Brian, we've been cooperating since day one. And those are two different 
from a legal perspective, those are two different scenarios. One was the missing persons with Brian and one was a missing persons with Gabby. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> um, so on Ashley Banfield, who I love, I've met her before. She's super sweet, but man, she will ask the tough questions and not even blink. And I love her for that. Yeah. I like he her said too. Brian would go hiking for a few days with no problem. And at first his parents weren't worried he would hurt himself. They thought he was trying to get away from the specula speculation around the disappearance of Gabby. And they thought he was clearing his mind. Uh. So it's funny because there was a time on this interview with Ashley where he was, they were essentially arguing about whether or not Northport police were told that Brian was gone. So you have the lawyer saying, I told them on the 13th or the 14th, they will attest to that. And then you have Josh Taylor, who's the spokesman for the Northport police saying, I was in there when they got the call. We were shocked. So Brian Enton came on that interview with Ashley Banfield because he did that interview with Josh Taylor. And in other words, he made it seem like, well, what we know, which is Northport, when asked several times, do you know where Brian is? We know exactly where Brian is. And we'll get down to that in a minute. I kind of got off on a tangent, but yeah. he just got so flustered when they were trying to determine when did you call yeah. and report that he, he didn't come home. And so Brian just said he interviewed Northport police almost every day and they said they knew where he was. So Bertolino said the FBI has on record that he reported Brian was gone on day one. He didn't report him as gone, but to let them know he had not come home from his hiking trip. So he contradicted himself in the interview by saying the FBI had documented evidence he reported Brian gone on the 14th, saying, I know I reported it on day one. That, so he's saying, I reported it on the 13th. I know I reported it on the 14th. I report, you see what I'm saying? He's going back yeah. and forth, back and forth on when he did. Yeah. Northport police, again, they said they didn't know till the 17th. And it's they also the spokesman also said during that interview for Northport that at the time when Brian was home that there was a lack of charges against Brian they were really limited in what they could do that was before he got the felony for that state lines where he used her credit card so at that point yeah. he hadn't had any charges and Northport was just trying to defend themselves saying we you know we couldn't do anything with him yeah that, that's crazy so we talked about Bertolino says he spoke with Brian on the 12th and 13th of September. And then at some point he talked to him all together uh, on Banfield. When asked if he blamed the police for losing Brian and now he's dead, he said, you can't blame the police. We don't know the manner of cause of death, but he did commit suicide. That's if he did commit suicide, that's on Brian. Yeah. As far as the notebook, he says he has no clue what's in it. He did mention they may have had this notebook on the trip. He doesn't know if it contains a suicide note or drawings. Um, and that's going to be telling. Very. What, what, he, what he put in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the best case scenario at this point is we hope that he had a moment where yeah. he told what happened. You know, cleanse mm -hmm. your soul before you cross. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe he wanted it out there. Maybe he drew a stick figure. I don't know. Curious yeah. to see, though. Yep. So Chris and Roberta say they didn't know what Brian put in the backpack. Uh, Bertolino said he went back to the FBI and they said they thought all along it was the 13th. He was last seen and not the 14th. So Chris and Roberta. This feels like, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this feels like uh, the comedy. Uh, Who's on who first? first what's yeah, on, exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. But here's my thing. He sort of said it was Chris and Roberta's fault because they told him on a certain day. And I'm sitting here thinking, there's a missing girl your son was last seen with. How do you not know what day you last saw your kid? Yeah. You can easily get the day and know by what happened on that day. Right. And the thing is this. They were the last people to see him. Whether mm -hmm. they knew what happened or not, it doesn't seem. And, and, and the lawyer said that their days were running together because he said they had protesters outside. I get that. They probably weren't sleeping, but yeah. your kid totally just goes off the lamb and you're confused on what day that was. 
Yeah. I can was tell it you yesterday what, or was it the day before? Yeah. I can tell you what day last week my son was 30 minutes late after his curfew because it stuck yeah. out to me. Yeah. Yeah. And you can kind of, okay, I did this on this day. Oh, yeah. Well, he wasn't here this day. So, yeah, it's it's not rocket science. And this this next part we already talked about. It was just that Josh Taylor was saying that he yep. was there when they got the call that Brian was gone and he was shocked. So Northport police seems to be saying we've been working daily, day and night with the FBI. They never told us Brian didn't come home. So I think the insinuation is they're saying Stephen either didn't tell them or didn't tell them when he said he did. I don't know. It's all very confusing. I had smoke coming out of my ears trying to figure this out. <laughs> so, um, Bertolino called somebody. This was, uh, let's see, this was the day that the police went to the house, the FBI. He said he called somebody that afternoon and got an ethical opinion as an attorney of what to do with Brian as a missing, I hate to say missing person, but quote, quote, missing person. Yeah. He said he got the advice. This was that Thursday. And Bertolino said the next day he got a call from the FBI. He made clear on Ashley he didn't call them. He was like, they called me. And they had a tip that Brian was seen in Tampa. So what the FBI wanted to do was to come to the house to make sure Brian wasn't there. And Bertolino asked who gave him the tip because, according to Bertolino, he thought this was a ruse to get the FBI to get into the house. Hmm. So at 6.15, the FBI goes to the laundry house. This is the first time they go there. We're all going crazy on Twitter. So according yep. to the attorney, he was on FaceTime with them, and they agreed the best way to move forward was to file a missing persons report so that Brian could be located efficiently. I think at this point, he still didn't have those charges. It wasn't until maybe the next day or a day or two later, I think that he got these charges. So he then said someone from the laundry house, not Chris and Roberta called in, got a case number and that was it. And so Ashley said, well, was it Cassie? And he's like, no, she wasn't there. It, and so what he meant, he said there were two Northport police officers and a rep from the FBI and him on FaceTime. So what I guess the FBI or the Northport police are considered laundry household members, according to this lawyer. Wow. So, you know, this is what gets confusing. He says Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the FBI didn't call him because he said he didn't call the FBI on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday because Brian went for a hike. He packed a bag. He routinely did this, and it wasn't until Wednesday or Thursday they became concerned. He reiterates that Monday night or Tuesday morning he told the FBI was that Brian was not there. And then he, he said this so many times. The FBI confirmed their records and showed Brian left on Monday. And so when Ashley tried to clarify this with him, he gets real flustered, and he's like, you're bringing multiple issues together. And she's like, no, I'm not. You just said this. What I just read is what he said. So it's like Monday and Tuesday, we did this. Wednesday, we did nothing. Tuesday, he goes back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, it's crazy. He's tripping yeah, he's himself a, up. He, he's a Mark Means. He, he just needs wow. to stop because part of it, too, is everybody who's hanging on every single word that he says, they're pouncing the minute he says something that is off, like we all do, I do, and then I think it's making the whole situation worse. Yep. Man, look, here's the bottom line. He went in that reserve. I fully believe he killed himself. The water was too high. When it receded, they found him. It is a huge coincidence, I think that the parents yeah. went in and found him. The, but they knew exactly where Brian liked to be. His dad and Br Brian and his dad had been to this place many times to hike together. They probably just knew exactly where to go. Yep. That's just me. I I, I mean, people just, it's insane what I'm reading online. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. So this is a little muddled up, I guess you could say, but that's really what he's conveying. Yeah. It's so yep. you can see he did another interview with East Idaho News. I, I kind of half listened. It seemed like kind of the same regurgitated stuff. But I guess from this point, it's going to be slow news with this case because there it, it could take him a while to find out a cause of death or a manner of death for him. 
Yeah. yeah you're working with bits and pieces. Yeah. And I think eventually they will maybe tell us what they know about what they're, what they found during the investigation into the murder. But I don't think that's going to be anytime soon either. I don't think, do you think the parents are going to get charged eventually? I don't know. I mean, they got to prove what they knew. I don't. Yeah. I, I my gut tells me maybe no. Um, I yeah. don't think that they, I don't know. I mean, they're not good people. We know that. You don't talk to a family whose daughter's missing and your son was the last person seen with them. Well, you're not salt of the earth people to me. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the FBI is going to be very hard pressed to find much to to charge them with, really. Um, I mean, I don't know. I thought Florida had that law that like you could aid and abet and it's not a crime, but then this is a federal case. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. I just, the fact that they found him his remains in there. I, I kind of feel like the FBI is just going to let that be. Yeah. Um, they, they spent a lot of money on these searches, millions of dollars, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. But I mean, the search is over unless you believe the conspiracy theory. So there you are. So we just wanted to run through these couple of interviews because that there were a few little nuggets in there and, Tomorrow, we're going to pick back up on the Chandler documents for Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell, and we still got a ways to go with those. Yep. So anyways, that's all we got for you. Hope you have a good evening, and we will see you tomorrow.